Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we had a question. Somebody wanted to add a drop down menu to their page and they didn't want to use the menu module. So I've created one here. Really easy to do. We've uh, just made this with a, a text module. And if I roll down the page, as you can see, it's sticky, so it stays there. Really easy to do. There's no coding involved in this today. We're just going to use the inbuilt features of the Divi theme itself. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. And let's roll down and I'll just get rid of this little module that I've created here. OK, well, let's go down. It doesn't matter where we add it because I'm going to make it fixed position anyway. So let's add a new row. And I'll just pop it in one of these. I'm going to use a text module today, which is right at the bottom here. Divi comes as standard with all these modules you see. Plenty enough to build just about any site. You also get another dozen modules if you've got WooCommerce installed to display your products. OK, in the text module. So let's go in and give it the title that we want here. I'm just going to say options. And I'm going to copy that. And just okay. Option one, option two. Okay, and then obviously we want these to link to something if it's a menu. So simply select it, hit the little link icon to link it to wherever you want to link it. I'm just going to put a hashtag in there because I've got no real links. Usual best practice: if you're linking to your own site, leave it the target is none. If you're linking off site. Open it in a new window so that your site stays open. So I'm going to do that for the rest of these links here, or the rest of these words here. I'm just going to put in a mock link. There we go. And as you can see, we've got a little title there and three little links underneath. But we want this to be a little drop down. So we really just want to see the title. And then when we hover over it, we want to see the rest of them and be able to click on them. And I want it sort of out of the way. I want it up on our left hand side here. So let's get that done. While we're on this, we put in our links. Let's go and put, give it a background color. I'm just going to use a simple black. I'm going to go over to my design tab. Let's make that text white so we can see it. So I'm on the text and make it white. Now the reason these are blue is because of the links. Default link color I've got for this site is blue. If you want to change that color, I'll show you how to do that in a little while. Okay, text color is fine. Text size is actually fine. I'm going to capitalize it, I think. And I want to give it a little space on the left hand side. It's a little bit tight there. So let's go down to our spacing. And let's say give it 20 picks on the left. Here's the padding right here. Here's the left. OK, and we can give it a little padding top and bottom. I'm going to leave that until we actually size it. So what I'm going to do now is make it the size that we want it. So let's close up spacing. Just above spacing, you'll find sizing. Width wise, I'm going to pull this down to Maybe 150 picks. Let's try 150 picks. Yeah, that's wide enough for me. Obviously, you can center align your text if you want that text in the middle. By just rolling down here, here's your alignment. I'm happy to my with mine on the left though. It's great. Okay, and I want to give it a little bit of padding top and bottom. So let's go back into our spacing here. Just close up the text. Go down to spacing. Let's give it what does 10 look like on the top. Yeah, maybe a little bit much. Let's say five. That'll do. And I'll do the same on the bottom. There we go. Fantastic. OK, let's now put it where we actually want it, which for me is up on this left hand side. I'm going to give it 
because we're going to have it fixed and on top, I'm going to give it a little bit of box shadow just to offset it from the page. So I've clicked on the box shadow. I'm going to use this one right here. Very subtle little box shadow just lifts it off the page. Okay, well then now let's go over to our advanced tab and position it where we want. And to do that, let's go down to position, funnily enough. I'm going to change it from default to fixed. And it's disappeared up to our top left here. We've got a little grid. You can put it in the middle, right, middle right, bottom right, etc. I'm sure you get the idea. I'm going to put mine right there on the top. Then I'm going to offset it vertically by bringing it down a little bit. About there is fine with me. I want to bring it away from the side just a little bit so there's a gap there. So I'm going to use the horizontal offset for that make it five that'll do okay well I only really want to see the title until I hover over it then I want it to drop down and reveal the menu items so let's get that sorted while we're in the advanced tab I'm going to turn off the visibility for the overflow so in advance go to visibility and we've got horizontal and vertical overflow here I'm going to turn both of those to hidden that way we can actually fix the height of our thing for non hover and hover states and get it to hide. So let's do that next. We're going to go down to design again to sizing. Now this time I want the height and I'm guessing let's try, let's try about 30 picks. I'm going into the height right here. I'm going to type 30 picks. That's not bad, needs a little bit more just to center that options bit or you can change the padding if you want. So let's take that up. That looks about right to me, that's fine. Now when we hover over it, we want it to reveal our other menu items. So common to most Divi modules, if you hover over the dark writing, you'll see some icons appear. For the one that you want to affect, hover over if there's a little arrow there click the arrow we can set a desktop state which is 33 the height which we want there and then when we hover over it we want it to change to be a lot taller let's just slide this up to get it the size we want can't remember how many options we just had four options so I'll put it down to about there just wind, wind it back down and round it down to 190 not that it matters so we're going to be like this regular state when you hover over it it's going to reveal the links down there that works great for me now the time that it takes to go from this to this with divi by default is 300 milliseconds which is pretty quick i'm going to slow mine down for a bit of drama to do that let's go to our advanced one more time and we'll go down to our transitions and here's the duration there's the default 300 mils let's slide this up to like 750 or three quarters of a second you can type it in you can use the slider and you can increment up and down fine tune with the little arrows right there speed curve I like to use for this is ease in and ease out that way when you take your mouse back off of it again it sort of eases back out okay well let's save this and see what we've got on the front end we're on the hover state at the moment that's why you can see all of it now I've saved it, it's gone back to the regular state. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And there it is, and it's sticky, so it's gonna stay there when you roll up and down the page, when we hover over it. It's gonna take three quarters of a second to drop down like that, and you can access your little links. So there you go, there's how to create a little drop down without using a menu module. Now, like I said, these link colors are the default colors that I've assigned links to my site. If you want to change it just for this particular module, really easy to do. Let's just enable that visual builder. Well, that's enabling. I'm going to go to the dashboard. And I'm going to go down to Divi and options, or you can go to appearance and theme customizer. If we roll down to, on the general tab right to the bottom, we've got our 
custom CSS box. I'm going to change the color of those links. So here's our page. There's our little module right there. If you have trouble getting to it now, it's fixed position. Something is on top of it. You can roll it up till that's out of the way and access it that way. Or if you still have trouble, hit the little purple button down at the bottom here. And you can change the wireframe mode and get to it that way. But we've got no problem here. So I'm going to go into this module. I'm going to go over to the advanced tab and I'm going to give it a CSS class. I'm going to give it a class of MDD for menu drop down. Call yours what you want. It wants to mean something to you and it wants to be unique. So I'm going to save that now. We've given it that class name. We'll save page changes and exit the visual builder. Now that we've done that, we can go into our options and let's give it a title. A title is forward slash star star forward slash. Always a good idea to give CSS a title. Helps you find things later on. I'll say drop down link color. Okay, we gave it a class name of MDD for menu drop down. All class names have to have a dot or a period in front, so it's dot MDD, the class name. We want to affect the links on it, which are the anchor tags or A. So we're affecting MDD A. We can open and close some curly brackets now. And in between, we can put the color that we want. So let's say color. For argument's sake, I'm just going to say red. Obviously, put in any hex color or RGBA that you want there. Save the changes. And I'll go back to our page here. It should still be our blue color there. Now, when I refresh the page, it should change to a red color. There we go. And there's our little red links there now. So there you go, there's how to create a drop down menu or a custom drop down menu so you don't have to use a module. And we can make it fixed position there. And don't forget, if you want it to appear on every page, just create yourself either a global header or a global footer and insert it there. You can save it to your library and just insert it wherever you want. That way it will appear on every page if you need it to. So I hope that's answered your question there. And I hope you've enjoyed this today. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.